We're just going to take a few minutes and come back and look at the basic components of a propagating seismic uh, disturbance. Here we have a sinusoid. So it just uh, goes through two complete cycles here. Uh, half a cycle at pi, full cycle at 2 pi, second cycle ending at uh, 4 pi. So one of the points that we'll come back to, and we've already uh, discussed this previously, is this idea of the seismic wavelet being composed of several different frequency components. And if you'd like to have some review or basic discussion of the Fourier transform, you can see the additional topics uh, playlist, Fourier series parts 1 through 3, on uh, my GeoMath channel. And this would be the link to the GeoMath channel, or you could just Google Tom's GeoMath and it should come up. So, uh, a basic uh, sinusoidal component, we could represent this sinusoid in time, in which case the peak to peak time, we could refer to that as the period. So, we'd be looking at it as a temporal feature. We've got 1 over tau. Uh, which would be equal to the frequency, and then we just we're just watching this um, sine wave travel through time, in this case. And here we're just looking at the sine wave travel through space. So we have distance uh, on this axis, and this would be the peak to peak distance would be the uh, wavelength. So we have lambda equal to wavelength. Uh, it's a typical symbolic notation for wavelength, and then 1 over lambda is equal to wave number. Uh, we also often represent that by a little k. So we can represent the sinusoidal components in uh, spatial terms, in terms of their wavelength, or in temporal terms, in terms of their uh, periods. And looking at a particular component, we have sine 2 pi in the spatial sense. Uh, x would be the dis distance traveled. Lambda would be the, um, whatever lambda would be the uh, wave number. And so when x is equal to lambda, we've gone basically through a, uh, uh, a single cycle of the sine wave. Similarly in time, when t is equal to tau, uh, the dominant period or the period of this particular sine wave, uh, this sine wave will have gone through a single period, t equal to tau, we just have uh, sine of 2 pi. And then we can also use these substitutions for x, x could be equal to the velocity times the time, or lambda could be equal to the velocity times the period. So we can get these additional forms where the amplitude of the sine wave then would be equal to the sine of 2 pi vt over lambda or sine of 2 pi x over v tau. Temporal and spatial forms of this um, sinusoid. Now, <clears throat> here we have a, a typical situation for a seismic survey. Uh, you go out and you pound on the ground, uh, you create some kind of a mechanical disturbance. In this case, we're just using a hammer, we bang on the ground, we send a wave front uh, which expands into the subsurface. Uh, the disturbance that we create is a transient uh, feature. It comes and goes, so it has a, a start, it has a end, and it lasts over a limited period of time. So we can see this uh, propagating seismic disturbance here. And these lines, which are drawn normal to the expanding wavefront, are referred, referred to as ray paths. So uh, we'll talk about uh, these. We'll be using these ray paths quite a bit when we start to characterize quantitatively the time-distance relationships for uh, various events that we talked about last time, the reflection event, the critical refraction, direct arrival, and so on. So we've got uh, a source, we have an expanding wavefront here. Along the edge of that wavefront is the 
transient mechanical disturbance. Uh, it comes and goes. Um, this mechanical disturbance is composed of several different uh, frequency components. Uh, again, the um, Fourier, the discussion of Fourier series and Fourier transforms may be useful to you uh, as, a, as a review. And we're looking at the wavelet in this case. So the wavelet has also has something that we can refer to as a dominant period. That would be the peak to peak time in this case. So we have a peak here, we have a peak here. This is the interval of time between these two peaks. Uh, we can refer to that as the dominant period and 1 over tau, or f, as the dominant frequency. Uh, likewise, in a spatial view, this is a distance uh, traveled here, the peak-to-peak uh, -peak distance. So again, would, we could think of that as a dominant wavelength, uh, with lambda equal to the wave propagation velocity times the time, uh, interval velocity, uh, in a particular medium characterized by a specific interval velocity. Uh, that would be the velocity at which the uh, mechanical disturbance travels. And so we're looking at the mechanical disturbance in space, which is basic, basically a reversal of the mechanical disturbance in time. So. Now, also just as a reminder, we talked about earlier on that the uh, this, this again kind of comes back to Fourier series. Uh, time domain and frequency domain representations of the seismic wavelet. This is just a wave packet. And here we just show a few of the frequency components that are summed together to produce this wavelet. This wavelet here is symmetrical. It's referred to as a zero phase wavelet. All I did here was sum together uh, several cosine components. So, and we can see as we do that that the tails or of the of the wave, wavelet on either side of the central peak uh, get smaller and smaller as we add more and more frequency components. So now this uh, these two figures come from Ilmez's um, um, text seismic data processing. This is a uh, investigation in geophysics, uh, Society of, Ge Society of um, Exploration Geophysicists publication. And of course in much more detail here with a lot more frequency components. And frequency would be down here. We've, we're going from um, around uh, zero up to uh, over 30 hertz. Uh, and we're just looking at um, you know, some phase shift here so that everything is in phase at uh, minus 0.2 seconds here, at zero seconds here. But we sum all these uh, frequency components together and we get this sharp uh, symmetrical wavelet. And we get pretty much the same wavelet, it's just time shifted in this case. So basic idea is that any time series can be represented as a sum of sinusoids. Uh, we're going to be coming back to these ideas uh, uh, frequently in the future. So this is just kind of a reminder of something that we've already talked about. But again, um, you could go to the additional topics playlist uh, in Tom's uh, Geomath site. Again, this would be the uh, channel location. And next time we're going to begin uh, array path characterization of the time distance relationships for those various travel paths that we talked about, the travel paths for the reflection event, uh, critical refraction, diffractions, and uh, direct arrivals and so on. So thanks for, thanks for joining us and hope to see you next time.